He may not have been a man easily goaded into responding to every provocation, but when he did, it could shock both sense and sensibility. And as Olive Barrows now recalls, his first lady, Lucy Kibaki, ensured there was never a dull moment in the Kibaki years. Take a look. He was known as the gentleman of Kenyan politics and that earned the professional reputation of a pacifist. But his personal life was a different matter entirely. You have been tormenting us. I don't know what to get out of it. In fact, when he served as the third president of the Republic of Kenya between 2002 and 2013, it played out explosively. I open your paper, the other one, the other one, the other one. Kibaki, 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 Kibaki. First of all, when will you learn ever to call him president? His first lady, Lucy Kibaki, not above raising eyebrows or storming a newsroom when she perceived a slight. Doing this on hundreds and thousands of Kenyans who cannot come here and defend themselves or tell you how they feel. Whether it was a nation newspaper report of her filing a report at the Muthaiga police station clad in a pair of shorts, as happened in 2005 after she interrupted a party at the home of then World Bank country director Mark Tadiop, or when the headlines hit much closer to home. Ask now or never. But more was to come as newspaper reports regularly associated Othaya businesswoman Mary Wamboy with the president. All innuendo focusing on the fact that Wamboy enjoyed the trappings of power, including state security. The president had to call a rare news conference to clear the air. You know, and I know, and everybody else knows that I'm married and I have only one wife. But these were far from the only encounters that rattles the press. Three years earlier, in 2006, Mombasa Road-based broadcaster KTN was taken off air and thousands of copies of the standard newspaper set ablaze by masked men over a story that then Security Minister John Mishuki claimed would have been disrespectful to the president. When you rattle a snake, you must be prepared to be bitten. A parliamentary inquest later revealing that the attack was orchestrated by the infamous Armenian Artur brothers, apparently with the full knowledge of Kibaki. But it was far from the only occasion at which Kibaki himself raised eyebrows. <laughs> The colorful language testament to the checker tenure that was President Kibaki's. Olive Burrows, NTV.